Now is the point where, as your husband, I get to ask you, do you have any regrets with uh, how we planned the wedding? Time to crack open a beer, because we're about to dive into what we spent on this wedding. The number one question we got leading up to this online was how we were going to accommodate the bathroom situation. We're able to actually sell a lot of these things that we built for a pretty big profit in the end. Our next door neighbors actually started construction, I kid you not, two days before our wedding. We can't imagine we even ever considered another option because I think we were always meant to get married in our backyard. I'm about to cry. Yeah. <laughs> get married in our backyard. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel, or if you are new here, we are Tyler and Lindsay, and we recently got married. Woo! <laughs> you may have seen our videos circulating online. We thought it'd be fun to share the progress, and we're a little bit overwhelmed with all of the support, so thank you so, so much. You made it even more of a cool experience for us. We are now finally sitting down with you and we're going to explain how we are able to convert our backyard within just 60 days into our dream wedding venue and hopefully it can inspire you to possibly do the same. Before we get into all of the details, I figured it would make the most sense to explain why we ended up choosing to do a backyard wedding in the first place because not a lot of people know that side of the story. Yeah, so up until 60 days prior to the wedding, we had actually planned to get married at a local restaurant and then some unforeseen uh, circumstances came into play where an event was happening simultaneously and it just wasn't going to work out. So we had to pivot and while we were pivoting, we actually were under contract on the home that we currently got married in. Um, that we're sitting in right now so not only were we planning a wedding we were moving under contract i was selling were, our old home too yeah, our, we sold our old home so a whole bunch going on one day we're just looking around the backyard and decided you know why don't we get married here we decided that actually made sense for us since we've bonded over doing furniture and doing projects and that's really what we love and we just kind of took the mindset this is a whole new project just one of the biggest projects of our <laughs> life you know doing a bit. yeah our our whole wedding day depended on it but. our backyard was a complete fixer upper and we knew our first step was just to get it looking okay enough to get married in the backyard we were able to transform this into our dream wedding within two months out of the blue, I believe you can definitely make this happen. First things first, the most important factor when determining your outdoor wedding is going to be the space you have available to use, and that's gonna determine the amount of guests you can accommodate. Our backyard, after assessing, looked like it was perfect for around 50 guests, so that's what we went with. We were fortunate enough to have a covered carport area large enough to fit everybody under it in the event of rain. No one wants to plan for that, but unfortunately, you do have to have that in the back of your mind. With having 50 guests comes the issue of parking. We live in an urban environment where we have on-street free parking. It's first come first serve so we knew that we'd have plenty of parking there but we also live two blocks from downtown so there's ample parking available there as well. We highly encouraged Ubering not only for the issue of parking but also so everyone could enjoy themselves thoroughly throughout the night. That being said, know your neighborhood and also know your neighbors. Please let them know well in advance, even if you seem like it's gonna be an acceptable type of activity. Let them know just to give them a heads up. Speaking of that, our next door neighbors actually started construction, I kid you not, two days before our wedding. We were a little worried, but we contacted her and reminded her of when our wedding was going to take place and she was able to talk to the construction crew and have them stop construction at 2 p.m. just before the ceremony so that everything was able to proceed smoothly with no noise interfering. I swear our number one concern leading up to this wedding was the bathroom situation. People were so concerned online if we were going to allow our guests to come inside of our own home and use our personal bathrooms, which of course we were okay with. Most of our friends and family have seen our home before, 
probably been inside our bathrooms before, so it was a no-brainer that we didn't need to get an exterior portable bathroom that we rented. That was an easy cost saver for us. Another huge factor to consider is what are you going to feed your guests and how you're going to feed them. Our kitchen was on the smaller side, so we decided that hiring a catering company wasn't gonna be feasible. It was gonna to be too convoluted through the kitchen where people were walking through to get to the backyard. So we opted to go a different route and hire a food truck. Honestly, one of the best decisions we made, it was a huge hit. We did a taco food truck, and I still crave those tacos. They were so good. We were able to have the food truck pull up directly, open the gates for them, and they could serve everyone directly from the alley. Once we knew that our backyard looked like it was suitable and could handle what we were trying to do for the wedding, the next step was to actually make our backyard look presentable. Just like a typical wedding venue, you're basically paying to go somewhere and it already looked pretty so you could bring your decorations in. So for us personally, we had a decent amount of upfront work to do. Tyler ended up building us a new fence with the help of his dad, and we did have a friend as well lend a hand. We also opted to paint all of our concrete. We had a good portion of our backyard, including the carport area that had concrete that looked pretty rough, so I would highly recommend going ahead and taking the time to paint old concrete. I was able to do it in just one day and it made a huge difference. We actually went ahead and got 200 bags of rock delivered to our home and ended up doing a really pretty rocked area by our avocado tree. It helped break up the space and looked really good for photos. Another tip is you can actually go ahead and just paint your back door. I'm so happy I did because it was definitely worth it when I looked back at the photos. So I would go ahead and suggest that maybe you paint your back door to match the color of your aesthetic. You can easily paint it back after the wedding. So once you're happy with how your backyard area looks, it's time to move on to the more important parts, such as lighting. I honestly cannot stress enough how important lighting is for a wedding. So I personally went on Amazon and I spent hours and hours trying to find the perfect lighting for our events. I will go ahead and link everything that I used. I of course made sure to find the best bang for my buck. Everything that I ended up ordering was solar powered. I would definitely suggest you do the same. One, because you do not know probably how much electricity your home can power. So we just went the safe route and got everything solar powered. Also, it is so nice to have everything just automatically come on when the evening gets dark. I still remember when we were having dinner and our lights were just slowly going on one by one and it really was just a total vibe. The biggest splurges we did was get a custom neon sign. I'm sure you have seen them. So I would go ahead and do this ahead of time because it does take a while to get delivered. But we got this sign from a seller on Etsy. We have that still on our shed to this day and it was definitely one of the highlights for photos and for our guests to take pictures in front of it. Moving on into some of the bigger categories, such as the wedding arch and the tables. Most of these, typically you would probably go through a company and rent for a backyard wedding, which you can totally do, but we really wanted to put the challenge on ourselves to see if we can DIY it and save even more money. So we went ahead and watched a bunch of YouTube videos on how we could build our own wedding arch. We had never done it before. It turned out amazing, better than planned. Moving on to the tables, I thought for sure, we're gonna go ahead and rent the tables. That is way too much to take on just a month before our wedding. However, when I looked online, I was shocked to see the kind of table I wanted, which was more of the farmhouse style rustic table, where typically anywhere from $100 to $200 per table, and we were going to need at least five. So I immediately thought, you know, why not? Let's go ahead and try to build them ourselves, which we ended up 
building all five tables again within one day. We're able to reuse some of our old fencing panels as the top of our tables and it was a really good way to save some money again and I'll get into later but we were able to actually sell a lot of these things that we built for a pretty big profit in the end. So another reason for maybe building your own wedding arts or building your own tables is you can either choose to keep it, you can choose to rent it out to other people moving on, or you can even choose just to sell it. Zona, do you have any advice to fellow dogs when their parents are getting married in the backyard? She had to sit down, okay. Any advice? Okay, thank you for that. Let's talk florals. As you may or may not know by now and with your planning process, but florals can add up very quickly. I originally thought I might want to do real flowers for potentially my own bouquet or on the table. However, as soon as I reached out to a florist, I got a reality check. There are definitely a bunch of options on Amazon or wherever that can still give you the same effect at a fraction of the cost. I found Ling's Moments on Amazon. They have very realistic looking flowers. So I went ahead and bought pretty much everything they had in the terracotta color scheme. So for my own bouquet and along with the bridesmaids, I got it from Amazon. What was a cool idea for the bridesmaids was I actually got a pack of flowers that are meant to be centerpieces. So they're not that big, however, they did the job. So they worked as the bridesmaids bouquets. And then as soon as we were done with photos, we were able to just take those bouquets and plop them in <laughs> to the centerpieces of the table. So that way it was a two for one and none of the flowers went to waste. My all time favorite DIY that we did for the wedding was our minimalistic flower wall. I had something very similar to this pinned on my Pinterest board ever since I was in high school and I've always been drawn to this look. So it was really fun to actually recreate it in our own space. What I did was just take individual flowers. They were all faux flowers and greenery and I actually just taped them up to the inside wall of our carport. It was a great way to save honestly a ton of money. I can't imagine what it would have cost if we were to cover the entire wall with flowers and quite honestly that wasn't the look I was going for either so I thought this was a great way to really elevate the space and had a really cool backdrop for photos. This is actually something that we still have on our wall to this day so it's a really cool memory that every time I walk outside the flower wall is still there and it's something that just looks nice in our backyard. On to the table settings. This is a really fun part especially when it's a backyard wedding because you have full creative control. As you saw we built those really pretty rustic looking farmhouse tables so I still wanted the wood to show somewhat through so we actually got some curtains from Ikea that were a little bit sheer and we use those as our tablecloths. I would highly recommend. It is a great money saver. Tablecloths can add up fairly quickly. But we laid those down and then to give the terracotta effect, some terracotta cheesecloth runners from Amazon and to save money again, I actually took one of the portions and just cut it directly in half. So that way I was able to, able to use one runner for two tables. For cutlery, we just got a pack of gold cutlery on Amazon. And then for, uh, for napkins, I looked forever to find something that still fit our vibe, but wasn't going to be super expensive. So I found these really pretty paper terracotta pre-folded napkins which was great so all we had to do was just put the cutlery right in it and put it on top of each table setting in terms of actual decorations this is where i would suggest you go to your local thrift store and just go crazy any sort of candle holder that they had we bought any sort of vase they had we bought A very big pro tip i can give you is to get glassware from the thrift store 
I thought it'd be fun to have them mismatch, so it was fine at the thrift store if they didn't have a set of 50, which they're most likely not gonna have. I personally liked the mismatched look. It gave a little bit more eclecticness to the table setting. They're able to get all 50 glasses, and most of them were anywhere from 20 cents to 40 cents per glass. So thrifting is for sure the way to go. Once I brought all of the vases and candle holders, Back home, I took three different colors of spray paint and just spray painted them all down to fit with our color scheme. For the bar area, I was so, so, so excited to finally use one of our all-time favorite projects we have done where we found a old TV, a retro TV that was on the side of the road for free and we converted it into a bar. What was really cool is we put LED strips in it and a remote control so at night it actually lit up different colors and we had all of our drinks and refreshments in the TV and it was by far the most talked about uh, piece of decor that we had. I just realized I haven't even touched on my dress which is obviously a big portion of a wedding video so for myself i am not usually a big dress person so i knew all along i probably wasn't going to be the person spending thousands and thousands of dollars on a dress so i did end up going just to my local david's bridal i was able to find a dress that i absolutely loved it was a little bit more bohemian and it fit the look i was going for and it ended up only costing 500 dollars and it was a price that i felt comfortable with because it is only a dress I'm going to be wearing for one night, so I did not want to break the bank for it. Alright, now is the moment you've been waiting for. Time to grab a beer. Let's crack it open because we are about to go into all the specifics on what this wedding actually ended up costing us. Not too bad. Okay. According to The Knot, last year the average national cost of a wedding was $28,000 and for us here in Florida, the average was $27,000, so pretty accurate on that front. Now I'm going to break down exactly what we ended up spending and to see how much money we saved from the typical wedding cost. Number one, obviously our biggest cost saver was the venue itself. So for that, we spent zero dollars since we got married in our own backyard. Moving on to food, as we mentioned, we hired a food truck. We hired them for a two hour time slot for 50 guests. Our total for that ended up being $1,150, which is honestly very reasonable. It equates to $23 per head and what was awesome was we offered unlimited tacos during that two hour time frame so it was a really good deal because none of our guests left hungry. Next for our drinks, our alcohol, our beverages, our refreshment, total of that ended up being $480. The breakdown of that included we bought a Miller Lite keg, of course, and we ended up getting a few different cases of White Claw. Know what your guests are going to be drinking. We have a lot of White Claw drinkers, so we actually ended up filling an old wheelbarrow with White Claw, which was a really cool picture and people loved it. We ended up going to Sam's Club and we got one bottle of every kind of liquor. Definitely go to Sam's Club or Costco. They have a vodka bottle that is, I'm not joking, this big and it is $12. It is their members mark line of liquor. So we got a bottle of each of those and then we ended up getting five bottles of red wine and five bottles of white wine. If you're curious, this was definitely more than we needed, but that was okay. I figured someone's gonna end up drinking it whether we give it to our guests or we end up drinking the leftovers. Next up is photography, which ended up being our biggest expense, but I do not regret it at all. We hired a photographer who I still am in touch with. She is incredible. I really spent a long time looking online to find someone that had really good 
quality photos that fit the aesthetic I was going for. We hired her for a six hour time frame and the total cost was $1,600, which again, that's actually on the more affordable end. Um, a lot of photographers can go double that amount or some are less, but I, I think it's definitely important to spend enough on the photography aspect if that's important to you. Moving on to all of the decor, for this, I basically went on to my Amazon and calculated every single item I bought to fully decorate our backyard. I also included the cost of what we paid at the thrift store. So the grand total of what we spent on our, on our decor was $1,497. When it comes to the tables, we had a lot of people curious on whether we really saved money by building them ourselves versus renting them. And after we broke down all the costs of lumber and things like that, it ended up only costing us $200 to build all of our tables, which definitely was worth putting the time to do that. As I mentioned before, it would have cost us around $200 just to rent one table. So it was a big money save. Another project we ended up building ourselves was the wedding arch. We went for a pretty simple design that only required a little bit of lumber and some stain, and that ended up costing us only $75, and I think it really did turn out beautiful. For the apparel, I ended up spending $500 on my wedding dress, and my husband ended up just renting a tux and that cost him $225. The one item that we did choose to rent was the chairs. It would have been pretty crazy of us to have built 50 of our own chairs. Um, I don't know who would be able to do that, but if you can, props to you. So we ended up uh, hiring a company to rent 50 chairs and that cost us $309 and it was definitely worth it. A couple things I wanna mention that we ended up not having, so it saved us money, was we ended up not hiring a videographer. We also did not hire a DJ. We ended up just pre-making some of our own playlists on Spotify and also using some that were already curated that were beautiful, that we were fine with, so we ended up just using our own phone and we got some really nice speakers. We did end up obviously having a wedding cake, uh, but we were lucky enough that Tyler's boss at the time is a baker and she offered to bake our wedding cake at no cost. So that was a really special thing to have one personally made for us. So right now I went over all of our actual wedding cost expenses and our grand total as of right now is $6,636 which is pretty amazing. For the backyard itself, we did go ahead and repaint our back shed area and I also repainted all of the concrete. So our total was around $300 in paint. After that, we also did the rocked portion of our yard where we got 200 bags of rock and that ended up costing us $750. Once again, this is something that Yes, it was for the wedding. However, it's just something we now get to enjoy in our backyard and it adds to the value of our own home. We did end up building that decorative gable with just a couple cedar planks and the cost of that was just $50. So our total all in for the backyard prep itself was around $1,100. Now that we went over the costs of our actual wedding expenses along with the cost of making our backyard look good, are you ready for our grand total? In total, this wedding cost us $7,736. That to me is a very big win. Now the one part I haven't gone over yet is how we were able to actually sell a lot of these items to bring our total costs down. I need a drink for this one. I would definitely recommend to wait to sell your items until you have gotten your professional photography pictures back. 
mainly because the photographer knows what they're doing. They're going to take the best possible photos of all of your decor and people are going to be able to actually vis visualize it in a wedding environment versus if you see a lot of people trying to resell online, it's typically just in a big cardboard box and you can't really get a good picture and they're definitely not gonna make as much money as they can. I would go ahead and take an inventory of everything you have and do a little spreadsheet. Just take note of everything you have because that's the first step of knowing what you're gonna be able to sell it for. What I ended up doing was I just went onto Canva and if you don't know it, it's just an easy marketing tool to make things look prettier. And I took the time to go ahead and create a package. I labeled all the items that were actually selling and I priced them out individually at a higher price but then what I really wanted was for someone to just buy everything in bulk. Quite honestly, I don't even think I was going to sell anything if someone wasn't just going to take everything because that was not worth my time to have someone picking up just one item here or there. So I ended up grouping a majority of our items for a total of $1,250. I will say I think I was able to get a lot more money back because we did do some of the major components such as building a wedding arch and having some tables and things like that so it made our package really feel like someone else could just buy our wedding off of us and honestly within 48 hours I had multiple responses and I ended up selling it to actually a wedding company that were gonna use it in their own space to have other guests rent from them. So it was a win-win for them and then for us because they came and picked it up and it was all gone in one quick afternoon. So with that being said, as I mentioned, our grand total for our wedding was $7,736. However, now we just made back $1,250 by reselling some of our items. So now our actual grand total for our wedding is $6,486. So the average cost of a wedding here in the state of Florida is $27,000. If you subtract, what we actually ended up spending the $6,486. You will see that we ended up with a grand total savings of $20,514 which is pretty insane to me. I hope this can inspire you maybe even more if you are leaning towards doing a backyard wedding to really show you what you're capable of and how it can still be a very beautiful day at a fraction of the cost. I definitely would recommend starting your marriage on a better financial footing and not stressing about money the whole time. It definitely is a day that I am extremely proud of and I am happy that so many of you were along for the ride and hopefully we can bring back backyard weddings as a new trend because there's no point in spending so much money on weddings unless you really want to but you can really make something very beautiful and intimate in your own backyard. If you are curious to see all of those wedding videos that we put together, we have gone ahead and just put everything in one long format video. So I will go ahead and link that in our description below. You can go ahead and see our entire 60 day progress each and every day, what we worked on, and it goes a little bit more in depth on each of our DIYs. Thank you for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed watching our backyard wedding transformation. We tried to answer as many questions as we could think of to help you prepare and inspire for your own backyard wedding. If you put the work and love into it, it's gonna be beautiful and it's something now. We get to walk in our backyard every day, relive the moment and enjoy all of the fruits of our labor. It would mean the world to us if you would like this video, if it gave you some helpful tips and to subscribe to our channel. Our channel is all about working on projects together. Obviously, it will not be another wedding project. <laughs> Hopefully not. We still have the inside of our home, which we have not touched. So we'll be doing content on doing DIYs in our own home. And then of course, doing our furniture, which we love to do. So either way, I hope you could follow along on our journey and we would love to have you along for the ride to see where the heck are life takes us. Yeah, let's see.